afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, our host, Imperial Dane, Master Propaganda, Hero's Reich, Defender of the Fatherland. We're off here to the exciting one versus one on crossing in the woods. Somewhere on the borders of Romania, the Soviets have broken through the lines. And we've got here Moaning Mini leading the Soviet spearhead here of socialism. Rolling out here for the fifth tank core versus the fascists under the command of Desman. Fighting here for Germany and the 20th Panzer Division here with some supporting Romanian infantry elements. And fun fact about the Romanians, they're actually the second biggest contributor to the Axis right after, right after the Germans. Which is not something you hear a lot about, but they actually contributed millions of troops, soldiers, to the war effort on the Eastern Front. Whereas like the Hungarians and the Italians barely contributed anything at all. Of course, the problem with the Romanians was they were rather poorly equipped and trained for it, which led to a lot of issues around Stalingrad. We've got double lost from side here so far, though it's also going for the infantry company. So it's clearly not a tier 2 rush here by Desman, which makes it a bit more dangerous here, unless he pulls off really well here, but still rushing here with the Ostrom, engaging here the conscripts out. Now we've got two conscripts there for Moaning Mini, and we of course here for him got terror tactics, guard motor, and guard rifle here. Bulletins for anti tank guns, Panzer Faust. And, well, more anti-tank guns versus infantry and machine guns. Approach here for the eastern fuel point by many. Concept being occupied by the Ostrom. An engagement that could probably work out well there for Desmond. Since then, House is... Oh, never mind. Contra they're arriving. Come on, Petrov. Let's show those Romanians what for. So they're shooting here, though, out in the open. That does give the Ostrom a bit of a chance. I mean, Ostrom in buildings and heavy cover generally can perform reasonably well against the other enemies. And particularly, they just say, in light cover. Of course, with so many conscripts here, the Ostrom won't last long, but even in here, I mean, it's still working out so much to the benefit of Desmond. He's got 200 manpower yet, keeping 480 manpower occupied. I mean, that's, well, close, I don't know, two and a half times, actually. Yeah, two and a half, almost three times the resources there. So that's, I mean, that's pretty good there by Desmond. And again, it basically keeps Mini here occupied. Well, of course, it then grabs the rest of the map there. We got an enemy floor out here for Desmond. We got constant moving over towards the west as well. Pioneer also from grabbing there. Then it's the Pioneers here leading ahead there. Man, Otto. I wish we had some good German talks with us. Besides you, of course. And Jürgen. And Dieter. But, you know, so many Romanians. Contra sneaking about there. We got here. Tag up there for Mini. It's already the support room company there. No surprise there, obviously no surprise there. Maxims, Mortars, though of course versus Ostrom, penal troops would also be really, really good. I mean, that's sort of one of the weaknesses of Ostrom. They can sort of trade alright with sort of basic infantry, at least fight alright there, in case the active sort of paying off well. The problem is, as soon as the infantry other becomes upgraded, they sort of get better troops than that, they run into a lot of problems. So, for example, Penal troops, really good counter there for Ostrom, but also say Gart, in which case he's got two doctrines. Plus of that, he's also got shock tubers. So either way, I mean, for Desman, he's going to have to take up quickly and begin bringing up better troops soon. Panzer Grenadiers, or at the very least, you know, Grenadiers, because otherwise, in the longer term, the Ostrom just aren't going to cut it. We got a sniper on the way there. We got officers available here for Desman. Ostrom here keeping sort of many there, be on the back foot. Three conscripts and one maximum here. The primary machine gun of the Soviet army for quite a bit of time. They did about 1943 bring about another one, but I don't think it sort of really reached large enough numbers to sort of really sort of be the main medium machine gun. Probably gone more towards elite units. Also, it also basically went on the same circle of mount as that's called there, the wheels, by the way, which is a World War One, actually pre-World War One thing, because back then in the Tsarist army it was primarily footborne, so they needed a machine gun that could be easily towed about. Mortar on the way there for Mini, bringing up a bit of light artillery. Sniper here for Desmond. MD42 supporting as well. Ostrom, they're basically keeping the enemy occupied again. They can do that as long as they're in cover. Out in the open, Ostrom are really weak, but in cover, again, they can sort of trade decently. Ostrom here versus Contra, again, in this case, as you might notice, while they, in theory, have the light cover bonus, at the same time, they don't really. So this is not going to be a good engagement there for Desmond, in particular, the Contra moving up there. Mortar there arriving, sniper getting off hits, the MD42 sink as well, then there go suppressing the conscripts pretty rapidly. And also squad he's simply overwhelmed and pushed away. There go going for a quick flank. Desman sniper hearing the roar of the Russians quickly beats a very brave retreat. He is taking up the like to make a nice company, so good. MD4 tried to turn about here, but there's a bit of a problem as you might notice. There's a lot of Russians and there's Mortify as well here. I mean, he needs to at least suppress them, but even then, there we go, he suppressed both squads, in which case he can hit the retreat there. That is some very very tight play there. I mean, one mistake there, and that would have been 
dead. Also, of course, this is a longer match, so no mid-game. Now it's, in fact, close to one hour, and it's really hot here, so, yeah. I'm not going to regret this afterwards at all. And there we go. We got Guard Rifle, so basically both better Our troops and upgrades for the conscripts. Secure. That's going to definitely mean problems here for Desmond's Ostrom in the longer run, a lot of them. Bunker up here to provide healing reinforcement. Nothing yet there from the Light to Meganus Company. I probably suggest at least further scout car out first, or maybe some Panzer gun addition. There's something a bit before getting out the medic bunker, something to actually take advantage of it and further push instead. Now, many of the active push to the edge ahead there with the guards, rifle infantry, with the PTRSs and later the DP light machine guns. Part while there to deny cover a bit for the most part, going for the centre again. Need to defend his fuel point there. Again, seems like here Desmond is suffering what a lot of players suffer from, which is a bit centre focus. And obviously, in that case, risks losing his fuel point to his opponent there. So that's something that he has to be careful with. Max opening up in the Ostrom. Sniper needs support. We've got Contra moving up the centre as well. Ostrom in with that. Mortified running down. MD42 moving up. Again, this is where 2 to 2 would have been helpful. We'd to quickly push off the Maxim from the field there. Ostrom then need to retreat soon. we got Conscript. we got Guardsman there. DP Light Machine Guns on the way there. And Maxim there being suppressed by the MD42 Snob moving up. Still got the Serb Maltier firing in there. 82mm of death. And there we go. We got the 2 2 The Light to Panzer Spearwag in there on the way for the 20th Panzer DV short. And Ostrom there. Oof. Nasty hit there. Almost swapped the entire unit. There we go. Garton flanking in. Sniper trying to hide up there behind an old Czech Hedgehog if they were known. I mean, that's one of the things I believe they're known as, obviously. Some of these things have plenty of names depending on the army and the writer even. But at least I know of them as Czech Hedgehogs. Why they call Czech Hedgehogs beats me. Probably involving something with the Czechoslovakians. Engineers holding up there. We got two to two up there for Desman. For many, we got nothing further here. We got no additional tech up, though he's got the resource support. But then again, he's also got a lot of units out in the field. So there's a bit of manpower. And there you go. Two to two engages. Engineers there. Small chance of being wiped. There's small chance. Really depends on the correction machine gun wants to work or not. In this case, it didn't quite work out. Ooh, smoke screen. In this case, he's actually using it to screen his guardsmen as they pull back here from the sniper. Thumbs up here. That's definitely Imperial Dane's tactical mark for approval there to moaning many. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. I mean, he just deserves to win the fight right then and there. We'll, of course, have to see if it actually happens. But right then and there, that's just like, yes. Country there versus 2 to 2. Bit of damage there being done. Closing in, and Veterans 1 slowly there with the Kampfwagen merrily firing away at the Russians, causing merry hell. We got the tank, the tank command going up there for Morning Mini. And he's just got more pressure here. Guard taking Manolos there from the sniper. Will he smoke again? I mean, he couldn't feel smoke there around the sniper. Position to bases have coming up. And looks like he might actually do that. I mean, that's definitely one way of actually counting the sniper. I mean, if the sniper can't see you, he can't shoot you. And he can't attack ground, you know. It's not like, all right, I'll just shoot randomly in this direction and hopefully I'll hit. I mean, I am uh, your Koenig after all. Nine, your Corporal Fat. Oh, scheiße. I keep having such dream I'm uh, your Koenig's the best sniper ever. And then I realize I'm not. Comes the gun pushing up there. Because very early tell on my map on Desmond probably good uh, junction there by the way. Also on the firing got border firing down and it gives a sniper here opening up. Close 13 kills there for the fatherland. Here points being grabbed, here points being grabbed, grabbing up there instead of course realizing this is probably lost for now. Good work there by Desmond. He's going for a pack 40 again. He's really worried about light vehicles and armor, less so about the infantry again. He's really putting all the effort on the sniper and if he loses the sniper then, I mean the infantry war is pretty much going to be lost there for Desmond. And really some panzer gonna do down the road I think will be uh, most useful, or well, at least an officer out sort of boosts his Ostrom and other elements. So many people neglect the artillery officer, though he could be a bit better, I think. We got barbed wire there being laid down by the pioneers. He could also consider laying down some tech. Oh, never mind. We got mines for units there as well, so that'd just be wasted effort. Bit of push up here. Two to two, need a bit of repairs. Ostrom here, and we got take up for Desmond. Nine minute mark there. Though he won't be able to utilize it right away. And there you go, T-70 rolling ahead there, full of spite and hatred of the fascists. Romanians then a bit of trouble there, but the Ostrom, I just call them Romanians or whatever because obviously. I mean by 1944 a lot of the Ostrom would have been pulled away for some from the Eastern Front. 
in which case you'd be more likely to find Hungarian infantry or Romanian infantry fighting for the Germans. Obviously, after a certain point, the Romanians would have been more likely to fight for the Soviets after they surrendered. Most of them were sent, I think, off to sort of work camps and the likes. A few of them were retained sort of as a uh, full army corps and then just basically sort of thrown at the Germans. Apparently, they still use blocking detachments there. Though so did the Germans around their Hungarian allies. So there's sort of a bit of an irony there. Hungarians, Romanians being thrown at each other, machine guns pointing at their backs. Pack 40 standing up there in the redoubt. And they got Panzer on a deer here. I mean, he could go for them for the Panzer there against uh, Mini's T70. Of course, could just go for the anti infantry. I mean, both could work out there. Though personally, I'd go for the anti infantry. Though, of course, you could always just go for another Panzer gun at his court to do so. Mortar moving up there, Snipe being pushed back, Pack 40 there being pushed out as well. Nothing protecting it or screening it. We got Panzer gun at here. Pioneers, Ostrom, and the 2 to Truth there setting out. Grabbing the Western Victor fuel point there. And the victory point overall, though, Minis now sort of more in control. Again, the lack of anti infantry has basically meant, though, that Minis infantry is now much more in control, in particular over the support of the T-70 light tank. So Desmond there's got a bit of an awkward period here. Also, he's not really done anything to focus on then place at least one strength of the Austrian doctor, which could be trenches. That would then force him to have to research Molotovs, but also limit sort of other effectiveness of the rest of the infantry. Guns going in the middle, they got a negative cover as the Panzer gun of the East Storm Gears quickly cutting down Sergei, Yuri, Petrov, almost, and there you go. Maxim coming up, they're covering up the retreat. Good work there. Good work. Making progress here as well. T70 moving up though. Engineers, guardsmen. And a bit of movement here. Mini overall doing good work there, maintaining map control again, thanks to the sort of overall infantry superiority here. And there you go. Vlad? Vlad, I don't know. I'm not really good with Romanian names. Either way, gets off a Pantavas there against the T-70, damaging the engine. And they sort of try to stay at range there. Also using a bit of the terrain, he's sort of minimized damage. Of course, up here, the T-70 has actually has a harder time hitting them. So that kind of works. There we go, another Pantavas! <laughs> damaging the engine again. Shit! They did it again! I hate those bastards. More to the front. And again, another smokescreen. Another smokescreen. Again, against a sniper. Really, just impressive there for Moaning Mini. He's got the sort of tactical and situational awareness to actually use smoke there. That's really, you know, just impressive. I mean, most players wouldn't even think about it, but there you go. I mean, I mean that's impressive. That's what I like to see there. That's using the tools before to actually do something greater. Of course, right now, Mini could consider throwing another light tank, but again, we're sort of at the point there where, again, generally you're then going to sort of risk your opponent getting medium armor out. So, the Nation 6 will try to take a hit there. In fact, we see here that Desmond has gone for the support, arm, my, uh, support armor court, not Campanaire. Bit in the wrong army there. Panzer is trying to get up there. He's got Panzer 6 on them as well. There we go. Oh, just as they ended up there, they got wiped by the bound grenade. The problem is that the conscript needs to be crewed, but still, denied the house there and well, forced it a bit away there for a brief period of time. In the west here, troops moving ahead, but they're going before to coming the fuel pond there, hitting the dirt there, ensuring they can't be suppressed, in fact, also gives them light cover. So at the same time, they might like to make use for the MD42 pops into any armor piercing ground, but still, it allows them to contest the point there. So again, good situational and tactical awareness there by Murning Mini, also good disregard for his own men. So like, oh wait, never mind. I can already hear Murning Mini scream, do not worry, you're a sacrifice I am more than willing to make. Fear not, I shall be remembered for it. There you go, going straight there with the T-70, quickly wiping out the MP-42. The lucky pack 4 needs to turn about there. Bit slow then, no 2 to 2 nearby to assist either. Almost got the MP-42, there you go, pack 40 hits. And there you go, quickly going for self-repair. Good work there, good work. Basically ensures you can actually take 3 hits with it. Bit expensive, but it does work. Guardsman moving up here, Sniper has to pull back, and of course, with no MP42 or anything else, he can't stop the Guardsman. He's close, he's going to be able to call in a Panzer IV, and we might also want to call up some Panzer Grenadier again. Again, with Ostrom, you can't really rely on them forever. You need something better at some point. Panzer Grenadier there moving up, and there you go, engaging up close, Veteran 2 1 gained. Going for victory point there, we got T sending back, we got Maxim there firing away. And in these, we got victory points that have been secured by the Pioneers. Desmond now still leading back. And again, with the Panzer four, he will have an edge there or a mini there, at least for a while. Because already here, mini's tech to head there. So he's basically not lagging behind there. Desmond, 
We can all see Deathman is being a mortar of his own. He's basically had enough here of Minis Mortar Antics. No more merry mortar men there. He should soon face off against the Germans. There you go. Telemine down. In this case, they're a bit late, bit late. But at least a nice attempt there. Forced retreat. Panther forms here there for the 20th Panzer Division. Grabbing the victory point. Yeah, we can see sort of actually focusing around defending a few points. Thumbs up there. So many German players again. Gets a focus and central victory point. They completely ignore their own resources. Which generally tends to spell doom without the umlauts. MG43 there on the way for the Panzer IV. Pendle Mountain, that is. Generally, Crackshell and Hulk machine guns would have been MG34 specifically. Um, an improved sort of MG34 with sort of thicker coating to sort of basically dissipate the heat since, well, it's not really easy to change the barrels on it, well, thicker barrels specifically on a sort of tank machine gun. So there was only really rare exceptions to the active stuff in an MG42 into sort of an armored vehicle, one of them being the Yak Panzer IV. I think this is the only one that really had sort of a whole MG42. Otherwise, it's basically MG34s with the uh, thicker barrels. Little fun fact there. Going up here, though, with the Panzer Gunner, is Mini here, a bit on the back foot again. The Panzer IV here really giving now Desmond Air something to push back with. Austral moving up, though, they're going to have a hard time there supporting, and his Panzer Gunner, is, which can, are not there either. MG42 moving up here. He might want to consider laying down some minefields to sort of cover the east. Western points here. Also advancing. Panzer is moving up here, being halted here by Maxim. Panzer 4 hanging back, waiting for repairs here. Not really the best execute of assault there by Desmond. He's trying to cast the T-70 there, but again his troops aren't nearby. He in fact loses risks losing the Panzer gun that is there. Almost got a wipe there. 2-2. Two two. Could also try to support here. Oh, we could see the T-70 going down there. Panzer Faust. Pack 40 firing as well. Get close, get close. Desmond lost it. Panzer IV can get moving again there for Deutschland. Almost got the T-70. Almost. V-T-2 there. We got a huge Russian hall push. Well, not huge. Sizable Russian force moving in there. Almost got the T-70. And there we go. But he's just losing the T-T-2. And kaput. It burns. Still, silence in the T-77. Going to give their Desmond an edge there. Over Moaning Mini. It's only giving him a lot more freedom of movement across the battlefield. Though again, I really think you should consider some Panzer Grenadiers. Just some more infantry can act to take on the Russian infantry more directly. Mini there bringing up a T-34-76 there. Panzer 4 engaging the Guardsmen, cutting them down brutally. Rushing up there. Oh, careful there. They could have rushed straight under the Panzer 4. Which could have been a bit tra traumatic for the driver just watching the Russians throw themselves under the tank. He probably needs some pretty serious therapy after that. They just, they just kept throwing themselves under the tank. I didn't want to earn a medal, Satve. Hunters here being advanced there on against the maximum. I think that's pretty risky. And of course, he's not laying down smoke. He's not laying down smoke to say cover the advance here. That would have been a great idea for Desmond. He just walks straight into it. So again, right there, Mini is displaying some uh, tactical, f well, acumen a bit higher there than Desmond. <coughs> right. Bit of water there. Austin flanking in the each against the house. I think there is the conscripts. Sniper there opening up. 29 kills. Vetsen T2. T34 some shooting in the pioneers here on the eastern side. Firing away. Maximum moving up, Contra then getting the Ostrom, start firing away. Harps closing in on half eight of its feet. Panzer four, they're closing in on Vetsen's one Ostrom, they're suppressed by the Max machine gun. And Vetsy two there on the Maxim. And these Gasman, Contra advancing, there we go, got the PPS 41 up there for Mini's men. And as the war progressed, the Russian sort of usual infantry unit would have been more and more increasingly equipped with the submachine guns to the point where, like, by 1944-45, half of all the weapons would have been submachine guns. Meaning they sort of been very equipped, well equipped for sort of quarters ops in urban warfare, but also still, you know, with the rifle for longer distance fighting. But again, there was an increased sort of emphasis on just a lot of bullets. And the West here points there being grabbed as well. Conscripts, well, Panzer Gunners, Ostrom and MD4 moving in there. Modify there against the Ostrom. 
Bit of shooting here. Pioneers for the flame for a bit about any support. Panzer IV couldn't win to assist. And we got another Panzer IV there on the way for Desmond, bringing up more Panzers. A bit to deal with the Russians. And you need to try to get the fuel point there. Deny it to Desmond. Well, there. And there you go. T-34 shooting a bit about. Second Panzer IV there arrives for Desmond. And the 20th Panzer to be shown. Engineers push back in the end here. And there you go, double Panzer IV on the move here. Garten comes under fire there from the two Panzer IVs. A lot of fire there being directed against them. Pack 40 setting up as well there. And there you go, Russian Hawk pushes forwards. Good hit there. And there you go, anti tank grenades being popped at it. Mortier continuing to fire away there. Halfway to it, 3, 9 kills. And the German mortar has been silenced. Of course, you'll probably quickly recruit here with the Ostrogen. Very cheap, very fast. Double machine guns now up there for the two Panzer IVs. Defense will be with some other targets. And we got another T-34 there for Moaning Mini. Mortar recruit, Panzer IVs moving up. He's been surprisingly sort of... Uh, Reserved with his Panzer Force around the T-34-76. I mean, he should have the advantage there just in raw numbers, to be honest. Of course, he might be worried about a field gun there moving about. Obviously, the Sys-3. Panzer Force moving towards the east. Troops reinforcing. And another T-34-76 on the way. Well, almost done there, in fact, we all knew it was on the way. Still, Desmond hasn't really done much so to rectify the infantry situation, whereas Mini is only making it you know, better for this, with the guards were brought now increasing larger number of upgraded conscripts, which basically means Desmond's sort of, well, going to be fighting increasing on the back foot there on the infantry side of things. Which means his panthers can very quickly find themselves without support. Need to pull back the Panzer IV a bit. He's being swarmed. Need to get the other Panzer IV to flank. Pack 40 million. Pioneers bringing in as well. Field gun there. We got T 34s up here in the front. Enemy forces are neutralizing a sector. Bit of shooting against the Panzer IV. Pack 40 trying here to halt the T 34s. Nice sort of different movements here by Mini. Of course, he wants to be really cheeky. Could try and lay down the smoke screen there around the pack and the sniper. He's not. Oh, so many units have bunched up that really. Yeah, there we go. He catches the pack 40 out in the open there. Desmond, 232 with his pack 40. Loses hit to the T-34s. So there we go. Recruit, but again, Ostrop and I actually more uses hit. And that's sort of the backside to using Ostrop to recruit your weapons. They'll die a lot faster if flanked. It's so right there. His pack 40 has been annihilated. Not once, but twice. Panzer 4 moving in, but it's only half health. Not so sure what that was going on there. Desmond might want to consider getting a Stug out, higher range, high rate of fire here, and of course high penetration, they're pretty much meaning working with the Panzer force, he could use it to very heavily decimate the T-34s. Panzer is there trying to come up and say getting blasted a bit here with the two T-34s out in the open, infantry are easy targets to those tanks. Trying to recruit the Pack 40 here, but again, right in front of the enemy with the gun shield, not in his favour there, quickly wiped out. Desmond then needs to be more careful. Again, he needs to really consider Stug at this point. Oh dear, awkward here. Pathing for the Panzers. Pretty awkward stuff there. Shots being fired. Field gun misses. Another hit there by the Panzer. Four shot bounces. Shot bounce. Another hit. Ah, another miss from the Panzers. Both are going to need to repair. See, one of them though. He's reached to be close eventually too. At least closing in on it. Pack forward recruit here by some plucky Russian engineers. So, Morto close to your fleet jumps now by 37 kills. And there you go, sniping at the pack crew. Guardsman moving up to. Oh, he merges with it! He merges with it! Sneaky. Wait, what? Where's the rest of them? There we go. But still, that was a nice move there, merging with the pack crew. Again, a mini sort of uh, displaying, I think, some slightly deeper understanding. And now Desmond's going for the Ostwind. Mm, again, I disagree with that one. I disagree with the Ostwind here. 
Again, he's got Panzer Forces. Rather think focusing on infantry or just, you know, get a Stuke to help deal with the armor a bit better. Rather than going for the Austrian to help deal with the infantry better. And again, he's got two Panzer Forces with machine guns. Again, I think the Stuke would be the better choice here. Oh, they flak pants out here to cover the skies against the Russians and their flying tanks. They're the R2 Sturmovik. Overall, it had a lot of nicknames. Basically, all running on the theme is it could take a lot of hits. I mean, flying tank, flying brick house, you know, flying, it could take a lot of hits. And it could. Smoke screen again versus the sniper here. If you could use against the anti tank guns, that'd be even better than I think occasionally there for mini. Oh, we've got a 13, 34, some ticks on the way. Desmond feeling a bit defensive versus mini. Of course, he could try and you know, sneak ahead there. Do a bit of reconnaissance, then find a good flank path, then hit with the Panther Force and the Ospin. That way, striking hard at some kind of element. There you go, Gartner in the open versus the Panther Force and the Ospin. No real hits there. So three T-34 76s is there for Moaning Mini. He can soon bring up the fourth one he wants to. Moving in the west here. Looks like we've got some kind of a flanking attempt there going in. Mortar running down there. From I think things not right in the centre. No, does is it? Oh, decent hit there. And he's here. We got a swift movement there towards the west, keeping Desmond's force occupied in the centre. He hits the exposed infantry elements in the west here. Nice tactical play there by Mini. Nice tactical play. Using his arm advantage where it really matters, where there aren't any tanks. Well played there by Mini, well played. Artillery rain down here in the centre, trying to break Mini centre though, with the heavy artillery. Panzer Force heavily damaged here, field gun there did a lot of the good. And we got air support called in there as well, we got more airstrikes there. Looks like, holy moly, he almost got one T-34 there. Almost got knocked out there, that was close. We might see lost though. And he gets it, and the pack 40. T-34 is charging into the base here, I think. Mini might be pushing his line a bit much here. Though he might be at least because getting one Panzer four. There we go, cut foot. At the same time, close at least losing one T-34 here. Smoke coming, there we go, T-34 down, T-34 down. Will Mini sort of break off when we try to push forward with his lines? No, he pulls back here, he pulls back, realising he's actually lost quite a bit there. So that slightly backfired there on Mini. And some poor bastard Panzerfaust didn't get run over just as he fired it. At least there's no way he could miss with that. Panzer 4 being repaired, super close to T2. And you need to push back by the MD42 map control wise. Despawn basically in short, the mini's getting no fuel that way. But he's not getting a huge fuel advantage anyway, since the mini still got sort of decent map control there. Gone to their ground, the pack 40 again, and again, the lack of sort of anything besides Ostrom should really contest Mini's infantry. Means again, infantry wise, he can pretty much win in this point, sort of most engaged. Again, the Ostrom simply cannot win against the three conscripts with some machine guns. Pack 40, they're wiped up, a Panzer Shrek quickly pushed away there. So, really, Desma needs to seriously consider bringing up some Panzer Gun ideas. Some heavy infantry with Sturm Gewehrs. And these, their maxim keeps the victory point there clear. Osman being pushed forward here to the front. Not really doing a lot there. And there he goes. He's going for the mortar. He's going for the mortar. A bold sneaky move there by Mini. But in this case, might not work out quite entirely. In fact, even now Desmond had to call up a third Ostrom squad. Instead of calling up Pantagon, he can't help but feel that's a really poor choice there by Desmond, personally. And uh, need to repair his Panzer for their folly, at least sort of getting moving soon. And now we can see here, Mini's actually bringing up an SUD-5 tank destroyer. Looks like he wants something else to help deal with the tanks out of the armor. Something with a bit more range. Looks like he's just decided not to fix up the Panzer for the last bit of the way there. Well, he should try and use it then. For the faster land. Victory points wise, still Mini's got a nice lead there versus Desmond. md 42 hanging out there. Maxim sneaking about there. Gas being suppressed there by the MD 42. And there you go, H 5 around there, tank destroyer based off the T 34 chassis, I believe it was a slightly, well, made bigger. Sort of active fitted in there. 
of course also serve as the chassis for the issue 100 but again i think that one was made slightly bigger as well to fit in the 100 millimeter gun more to recruit there by the german ostrom getting hit the dirt here well played well played no, again he could just lay down the smoke screen against the machine gun there but of course just hitting the dirt and then of course firing regular barracks there can also work though again smoke and then rushing up with a molotov could have done just as well if not better i think oh well comes there getting blasted by field gun fire and t-34 the vechi 2 by the way panther 4 here close to the front vechi 2 shoots and up and we go conscripts ultimately pushed away here suffered a bit much there out in the open Actually, the farm hanging back there. We are losing supplies to the enemy. Another Panther fall there for Desmond. And a Panther first there. And suffering one third of the loss there. Panther 4 take direct hit from the field gun, but T2. Panther 4 almost done. Ostrom there grabbing points under cover of the Austin Flak Panzer. They, of course, got the HD5 here. And we got Garten moving up to support that push. Center wise, Maxim field gun here. Pretty nasty stuff there. Though neither side is really trying to outmaneuver the other one seriously, but then these are the big armor movements. Probably using the Ostrom here to bait them into the flak pants. Of course, once that gets revealed, the HD5 is going to move up to then deal with the Ostrom. The but they're going to have the Panther 4. In fact, you can take both Panther 4 here and try and hit the HD5 as quickly as possible. In particular, the Panther 4 could probably pull off with a nice flank, but oh dear. T-34 moving up to cover that flank, actually. In this case, though, Desmond did get lucky. The HD5 did not land a single hit. That's actually quite lucky. T-34 6 moving up. No real arm moves there. They've got infantry leading in first. Much up. He just retreats. They're having lost one half of the squad there to the T-34 pretty rapidly. Armor-wise, looks like there might be some kind of larger engagement between the two players. All depends on how he actually pulls it off. And there you go, looks like just ends up meaning just retreating and not deciding to engage Desmond there. Realizing all these things. Oh, no, decides to push forward nonetheless here. Seems like Mini can't quite decide here. In this case, Desmond is not trying to push for a sort of a uh, decisive engagement there versus Mini either at the moment. He's holding his armor back there. Panther fast bugged up. Oh, it seems like he did actually go off. Occasionally, the Panther fast does bug. Comes here versus Ostrom. And does successfully push them away. Betty 2 there on the Ostrom mortar crew. Uh, basically, nothing further from any, though. Could easily go for another T 3476 there. Ostrom now covering the west. T 34 Panzer Force here moving about. Another T 34 there for Moaning Mini. And the fifth tank corp. In the west here, the Ostrom's. Quickly pushes back the conscripts, getting him the kill there. Veteran to one for the fatherland. So it veteran three more they're firing up for the snob. He actually got 53 kills. He's really done a lot there for Desmond. And kills twice. We can sort of see 151 versus 177. Slight edge there to uh, Desmond, but not quite as big as it wants because, again, he's relying primarily on Ostrom. And again, at this point, they're just sort of more of a you know, burden to him than an actual edge and advantage because, again, they really cut a lot there versus Mini's infantry and they just bleed out constantly. The Desmond needs to bring up better infantry at some point here. And he's got plenty of manpower. He could also just consider building a fuel cap to bring up more armor, but. Definitely needs to spend some of it. Aircraft shot down there by the Ospins. The Flak Panzer scores a kill for the fast man. But there you go. Knocked out here by the T-34 should fire combo. Nice play there by Mini. So that just leaves him with two tanks and now gives Mini the numerical arm advantage plus the tank destroyer there. Certainly also gives an edge there versus the Panzer Force, which Desmond are playing very conservatively. He's not for something again trying to sort of seek out some tags, start flank and outmaneuver his opponent and sort of do some damage that way. Which rather gives Mini there the initiative and decides where to strike and when to strike. That's really something that Desmond needs to be careful with. He also, I think, needs to bring up a Stug. He really would benefit from a Stug. And he's going for tier 4 now. That's pretty ambitious considering currently he's not in control of any of the fuel points. Again, he's got no fuel caches. 
I mean, tier four is generally really fuel intensive, so it's not something I would generally recommend. Plus, of course, I mean, it still represents a bit of a loss of initiative as well until you can bring out some kind of, you know, sizable armored force. The problem is, can Desmond keep himself going for that long? Because, again, I mean, had he gone for Stu, getting blamed sort of threatening the T-34 better. Smoke screen down there again, covering up the MD-42 and other bits there. Well played by Mini again. Good use of smoke there tactically. Horse Torben Panzer gonna do you constantly thinking about. Once they're being grabbed. Mini Dolls holding back his tanks here. Panzer Force moving westwards there as Desmond shifts his armored reserve. Expecting an apparently an attack there. A bit too point wise. Many still got quality. There we go, we're gonna engage the Panzer Forbes and T 34 and Sixes. Where the Panzer gonna be is. Oh, they're flanking behind here. Good work, good work. Well, at least it looks like he's flanking. It might have been unintentional. They're sort of like, oh, Scheiße, it looks like there's a big battle here. Maybe he should assist. And go get the Asian Fire there with the Panzer Shrek. I hope for Desmond's sake this was actually intentional. Otherwise, I mean, you know, pulling off an armored Panzer Shrek flank like that by accident, I don't know. I mean, that pretty much just make him the Wehrmacht version of Inspector Clouseau. There we go. Gets the H-85. Panther Force can push forward now, though, of course. He still wants to deal with the field gun. Panther Force moving ahead. Nope, pulled back, pulled back. Sensible days about to lose one Panther Force. Aircraft shot down. Again, this time by a pinback machine gun. Panther Force out of commission. Kaput. Leaving it only now with the one here close to Vetsundi 3. Got the field gun there, should probably recruit this most hope, get it back in fight versus the opponents. Moaning Mini bring up another T-34-6. Sniper MD-42 is pressuring here, Mini. Enemy forces are attempting to capture our territory. What's he doing with his Panzer IV though? Oh dear, he's gonna try and push an advantage here. He's got two T-34s with damage engine. Problem is, he's sending in his Panzer IV there, which is still damaged. The Obey virtually two inches of permanent space there with no support. And he doesn't know what's in there. I mean, generally, if you're going to attack your opponent's space, you generally want a bit more than just one tank at this point in this game here. He's actually getting really close. Problem with that is, the closer you get here, the more you can negate your arm advantage. That's the thing here. Penetration is to some extent based a bit on the distance. The farther away you are, the more your arm accounts for. Essentially, they're going on the T-54 arriving right here. Desmond's basically getting punched. He's trying to blitz away, but he took a path he had not checked out before, by the way, there, hitting a damage engine. It's right here. While he got one T-34 on the other hand, he's going to lose an almost virtually fleet Panzer IV. That's not an equal trade there. I mean, that pretty much is a win-win there for Mini, in a sense. Well, at least a win. I mean, he might have lost a T-34. Well, that's a lot more easily replaceable here than a veteran Panzer IV. It's right there, Desman made the wrong call, lost himself a veteran Panzer IV, almost ace Panzer IV. Not really something that can be easily replaced there. And again, he's not got the fuel to easily do so. So that, I think, was a pretty bad judgment call by Desman. And still, frontline manpower, no Panzer Grenadiers, no fuel caches. I mean, the fight seems to slow here swinging favor. The only thing that's really, I think, keeping in the fight at this point is the snub here with 70 kills. 70. That guy's, well, at this point, might actually become the Jokernik. And now we're getting an Austrian there. Fear gun cleared out. Grabbing a bit of points in the west. Katusha on the way there for Mini, bring up some rocket artillery. And a fun fact about the Katusha, the Germans, specifically the Waffen SS, actually copied it. They used sort of a Panzer Bear for mount, but they actually copied the rockets and the sort of mounting system for them. And then sort of used them on their own. There was a single Wehrmacht Panzer Division in Normandy, which also utilized it. Primarily, the Waffen SS basically either used captured rockets or produced their own Katusha rockets to use them themselves. The it's a fa very fun fact that generally never really gets talked about, but yes, the Waffen is more or less used, I mean, these sub rockets, rockets with the sort of the mount there, the rails there. So a very fun fact there, very fun fact. 
And again, not one of the other things you, he had mentioned at all. And again, nor the fact that there were some, and that was in the Waffen-SS Division in Normandy, which also had it by this time mounted on sort of French converted armoured half track. So yeah, really fun stuff there. I mean, it's, it's those sort of little fun details that I love reading about. So another pack 40 here. I'm not entirely sure what Desmond is planning. There's his mini. Ah, his mortar got wiped. What a shame there again. It was a Vetsen D3 mortar crew, which again, I think have done pretty well there for the mini. I mean, just all the smoke there. Denying him use of the snipes and the MD42s at times, I think rather made it just in that regard, just to pay off there. It's been already good work by mini. Point seven grab. Grabbing the victory point here. T-54, some six moving in. They're taking a few hits. Mortifying away, half HF in the three. Western victory point being secured by Osthoven. And again, no additional Panzer Grenadier. So we just get more Osthoven. And it, I mean, at this point, he's just throwing manpower away almost. I mean, again, they can grab points, yes, but that's about it. They really can't fight remotely equal here with the Mini's infantry. Which basically means he's just throwing away manpower. He's just feeding Mini kills. An easy experience. Which is not really something you should be doing. And there you go. Vetchin the 3 for the T-34-76. Fed a steady diet of Ostrom. Katrusha pulling back here a bit. Ooh, mine here. And there you go. Bun grenade on the mortar. Gets half the unit. 78 kills on the sniper. Osman covering the center here. Not really doing a lot there. Versus the Russian, there you go. Getting. Did he? I was about to call him Jurgen. Dull pack forwards there, taking the T 54 down to half health. But there you go. Pack forwards supporting the Katusha Barrett as soon as they fire. Sniper here almost popping up for the guards, but still. Man's pushing away a bit here. Pack 40 still managed to avoid. Well, the most of here, the Katusha Barrage there from Moaning Minis. A rocket truck. Snipers now picking on the engineers there. Now the T-34 there for Mini. Will Desmond at least consider maybe a Stug? A Stumgeschutz to help deal with this. He's just going to rely on the packs and the Pantra Rex. In the east, we just got the Ostrom there going points covered here by an MD-42 using the wreckage there of the Pantra Force cover. Conscripts mortar moving up there. We are losing territory. But getting flanked here by the Ostrom, but again, a raw state here. Interesting enough, Mini has not upgraded all of his conscripts for some machine, giving at least some of them with a bit more range firepower. But again, Adventure in the Fleet, these veterans in zero, Ostrom have no chance whatsoever. I mean, you can just note they're just being slaughtered. And then, of course, you get the Veteran the Fleet T 34 here, the hero of the Soviet Union, Boris, arriving. Is that real, your real name? No, they just call me Boris. In fact, they write out the name Metal to Boris. I do not know why. I take it though. Cuts moving up here for the center and hit the dirt there. And we got air support called in here. And there we go, the country just easily win up that engagement there with hit the dirt. Another bit, so we got Bun Grenade on the T-34. Does a bit of damage. Fun fact about the bun grenade, it was actually first used in World War One as an anti-tank grenade, amongst other things. Also good for clearing out trenches and the likes. In fact, it was also used early World War II as an anti-tank grenade. Panther Trick there drop, T-4476 is moving up. Up here, troops healing reinforcing. But well, that's definitely gonna be a problem there for Despan if Mini picks that one up. T-4 though, oh he lost Boris, hero of Soviet we Union. One of our armored vehicles. Blown up there. Rockets landing down there. More the T-34s arriving. Pack 40 down. Pretty bad development there for Desmond. And the 20th Panzer de Chambre. We got a Panzer 4 there on the way. Could consider using an attendant explosive round. He's also got so many munitions, he's just not using them. Might want to add another Patrick in these chaps. One pack 40 wreck there. That's bad news for Desmond. Good news for Mini. Quick hit there, also Martin Young getting plastered there with the T-54 fire. Patrick, they're still not picked up. Conscripts guard moving up through the centre. 
Multi crit advancing, and we got points in the grab over again. Minis just in control, good due to good use of tanks, but again, also just having a sheer infantry advantage there versus Desmond. The guardsmen are also just really help. I mean, veteran three guardsmen light machine guns are an absolute menace. I mean, I'm impressed here that many just contained himself to only getting one squad of guardsmen, to be honest. Defense for moving up there. Panzer gonna do again. Only one Panzer here. Another Panzer four there for the Wehrmacht. That's no slow losing ground here to many who's bringing up another T-34-76. Maximum a lot of trouble. Taking quite a few hits. Pretty interesting fight since you know they don't just usually play like most players do. Sort of nice mix of everything here. Our is into enemy I mean, Desmond's strategy is certainly a bit rarer. So there's minis. I mean, really good use of guard rifle as well. The only thing he hasn't used, in fact, is the howitzer. Which he probably could have gone for instead of the Katusha. But there you go, another rocket barrage here. Almost catching the snap here, by the way. 89 kills. 89 kills. Impressive. In the west, T-34 roaming freely here. The other T-34s keep the pants occupied. There goes pushing forward a bit really. Oh, he's flanking in behind. He's looking to do some good damage. Nasty play there by Mini. Nasty play. In this case, it doesn't quite have the impact as it could have, but still. Oh, he rams the Panther 4. Nasty. He's showing even in death, it still served the motherland. Betty Free and the motor crew there, 14 kills for the fatherland. Got to their pin down by the MD42. Close of it to the free there, in fact. And almost got the pack 40 there. 81 points left for Desmond versus Minis 181. That Osprey really hasn't amounted to that much there for Desmond. Imagine what he could have done with Panzer Grenadiers. Back here though, troops going about healing a bit there. T-4476 is being repaired. And we got Moingineers there for Moaning Mini to speed up the repairs of the T-3476s. Ready. 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 Quite laborious to maintain actually, Ready. since everything was bolted down. Most other things. Stop there being suppressed. Oh, oh, being suppressed, not the conscripts, silly me. Trying to kill while in that maxim. Again, primarily Ostrom kills, so that's not saying that much. I mean, they are easy to kill once they're out in the open. Kills wise, we can actually, in fact, see now Mini is actually slowly edging ahead there of Desmond. Again, the Ostrom really aren't doing Desmond any favors at this point of the match here. They're just, again, feeding Mini. They're feeding his tanks, his infantry. Precious, precious experience. Paying the Panzer IV, we got Katrusha firing away there. Murderous rocket barge there against Desmond's positions. Another airstrike there from the Moaning Mini and the Soda Air Force. Oh, gets shot down, landing behind the base there. The Osprey at least serves that well, well decently. And there you go, T-34 engaged the Panzer IV. We got a Pack 40, we got two Pack 40 here supporting. Gets hit down the T-34. Shot bounces. Oh, actually lands a hit there. Another pack 40 hit there, almost got the T-34-76, but looks like it gets away. Guards moving up, T-34 pulling back here. Away from the pack front, outside Despon's base. And there you go, Panzer with the Panzer Shrek here. Panzer Gunner is being reinforced, but still not upgraded with another Panzer Shrek here. And he still forgets about the MD-42, which just keeps on suppressing whatever mini sends there, until he flanks it. But there you go, moving up to cover the flank there, Despon sensing that perhaps something incoming. So there you go, Kant's moving up there, but there you go, Flak Panzer to the rescue, kind of. Since it can't really hit. Oh, he ends up retreating nonetheless. Impressive. And there you go, the mortar on the job. Pushing back the MP42 finally. 
there you go, T5 coming up to counter the Ospin lands an excellent hit there for the frontal arm of Flak Panther. Ninety-five kills on that sniper, he's almost at hundred. Almost at hundred. Finally upgrade the Panther is there with another Panther Has he actually? No, he hasn't actually. He's actually misunderstanding doing a lot more damage to the T-34 than he actually ends up doing there. Lands another rocket hit there. Conscript shouting for to cover up their comrades inside the tank. Again, had he had double Panther said the T-34 would have been dead by now. In the meanwhile, many just keeps up bringing in more T-34s, more Soviet steel. And another railway to hit to sort of cover the center there. Panther 4 moving up. He can actually soon bring up another Panther 4, but clearly his gambit for tier 4 ends up not working out at all. Just being wasted resources, wasted manpower, wasted fuel. Oh dear. Looks like he actually finally managed to wipe one of Mini's infantry squads. Only took him, what, 50 minutes? And yeah, Mini's back to having three T-34 76s. Sizable Soviet armored force there. Sniper, 97 kills. 97. 98. I mean, at this rate, he's going to get a knight to cross. That's what they're getting shot at. Almost got a counter there. T-34 being flanked. There we go, wipes. An incendiary explosive round. There he goes. Shot number 100 is an incendiary explosive round. Fresh guards, troops are standing yeah, by. I saved it. That's a special trick. Yeah. Back from there, hitting the T 34s a bit there. Fans of all versus guards, supported by Austin, but being suppressed. Austin moving up the west side, hitting with the conscripts there. Not bringing up another Panther 4 there. Or Stug again. Go those T 34s. That Stug would be good. Stug would be excellent. Stug would be very excellent. Damage there to the Ospin. T-34-76 moving in. Fix up the T-34s. 25 points left for Desmond here versus Mini. 132. Looking pretty good. He's moving up the pack. Forward into the base there. Why is he planning? I think Desmond's getting pretty desperate here. Or oh, he might be misclicking. I don't know. Which again could be a sign of desperation. His armor is damaged. He's not bringing up more tanks. Not more Panzer Force or... Stooks. Whereas Minis just consistently bring up more and more T 34 76s just to control the battlefield. It just sort of hit here and there. Garth never has two Ostrom squads out in the open from his sword. The Ostrom. Well, oh, someone's been covered there actually. And they got grenade off though, killing numerous Ostrom there. Spreading their guts across the area and into the pool, puddle of water. Ospin close to Vincent G2. Pack 40 is firing at the T 34 on the west. There you go. Panther Blitz in. Abandoning the T 34 there. Will he try and recruit? That would destroyed. not be a bad idea there for Desmond to at least attempt. I mean, he needs every tank he can get at the moment, but no. He decides to wreck it. Signing he doesn't want it. <laughs> Two shots bouncing off it. Three shots. <laughs> It's almost as if God is telling him, No, Desman, you need this scheisse. I'm with you, but only if you actually make an effort, Desman. So he finally gets it there. Like, looks like uh, God there finally had it with him. Just like a little record. Panzer 4 needs to pull back. T-34 setting up there. T-34 are taking heavy hits. Target weak, probably good. He might lose the Panther 4. He's still not brought up another tank, by the way. And there you go. T-34 gets the Panther 4. Rockets playing down in the Katusha. Oh, Katusha's raining down the Panther 4. Just Panther 4. Or T-34 down. The Panther 4's already lost. Damn this heat. Maximum in the center. 25 kills. Pack 40's barely making it. There you go. Another Panther 4. Finally on the way for Desmond. Osman here. Sneaking about. Close to Vincent 2 
Mini's down to one T-34, but he can easily bring up more. 16 points left for Desman. 16 points left for Zona 25. Grenades going off. They're almost popping up the maximum crew there. 20 kills on the Panzer Grenadier. With the Panzer Sex. Sniper, by the way, is finally dead. He has finally met his end. No, he's cancelling the Panzer IV for another Ostwind. I'm not sure what Desmond is thinking there. But I'm guessing it's some kind of exhaustion that's sitting in there. Since the match has almost gone on in half an hour. Now they get Balteladnung. Osman need repairs close to Vichini 2. More Panis on the way there for Desmond and there go. Flak Panzer number 2. The Panzer is by the way finally met their end there at the hands of the Russians. More guards by the way here for Mini to replace the fallen conscripts. Now you summon them, he's actually lost two conscripts by now. Need to pull back the Osman there, it's heavily damaged. But at the same time he can't really fall since if you lose that victory point, well that's probably GG. Pack 40 is moving up, the Osman moving in. Deep head the open versus Pack 40, fire! See he drowns, see he drowns Ludwig! I can't find some Herr Sergeant, I can't! Scheiße! Just fires the Termos then! Almost wiped the Guardsmen there! Units there wiped, grabbing the Western Victory Point, this is getting really desperate hit heads. Oh, demo charge! Minis laid down a demo charge! Osman moving up there! Another T-34 out there though for Desman and he flank oh Mini, he's flanking Desman and the pack point from his the flank ends up being right in front of them. Damaged engine. We are losing supplies to the enemy. No cheeky breaky there. And kaput. Got the base T-34. He almost got the Kachucha there as well, but he risked getting knocked out with an anti-tank grenade. A desperate base assault there by Desman. Seemingly about as successful as the first one, which also resulted with only really getting one kill before losing his armored vehicle. He's pushing forward to Sostrin without a functional gun. What are we supposed to shoot with? Use insults. Strong German insults. That will decimate the Russians. I'm sure of it. I face into the fatherland. Katusha unleashing hell there against the center victory point. S mines there being clay cleared. The Soviet way. No, that's not the Soviet way. That's probably just sort of the more usual way. Explosives. Yeah, this is getting kind of crazy. 120 versus 8 victory points here. Desman is just throwing in every effort to desperately hold on to the victory points. He's finally fixing up the Austrian there. Another T-34 there, we got smoke screen being called down the center victory point here. And it's actually Desmond for once using the smoke key just to be able to contest it without getting suppressed. Imagine if he'd actually used smoke sooner. Like, you know, Mini. Hands are falling away for Desmond, looks like he's finally realized that Double Losfin's uh, double don't work. Still working on the Ospin there. He might just try and rush it in there once the gun is working, but so far, it's not. Seven points left here. Ostrom being pushed back there. T-34 ready for combat. 23 kills on this. Mortar, five on the other one. Osman, there we go. As soon as the gun is fixed, he just blitzes forwards. He does not halt. He does not wait. He just pushes forwards for Germany. Vet 22 again. Guardsmen taking losses. They're buttoning up. We got Pioneers moving up. Pantafor arrives there and then still runs out of victory points. So GG right at the 59 minute mark. One minute away there from an hour. GG game over. Overall there, Desmond had an interesting start, but the problem was he really couldn't get the pieces to go here again. He tried to play with Ostrom, but again, Ostrom pretty much required you to bring up better infantry, which he never did. Not really in any sort of sensible way, that he just brought a single Panzerjäger unit, essentially, 
and then left it at that. That was one mistake. That, and he never really used his army in a sort of greater way. He was very passive with them, which really also conceded a lot of territory and momentum to Mini. And Mini just a rule played really well. So in the end, what kept Desmond in the game for so long was the Snobby just keeping on killing away there. I mean, roughly just... I mean, more than one third of the kills in the game for Desman was his sniper. Otherwise, again, with the awesome at this point, was, after a certain point, he's just throwing away manpower for many to feed on. Like some kind of vampire. Except, you know, he's willingly feeding him in some way, to maybe sort of trying to get him to explode. I don't know. Ultimately, didn't work out there for Desman. And many again, overall, playing better, wrecked Desman again. Had Desman played, you know, more clearly again. Again, understanding that Ostrup needs to replace with an infantry as the game progresses, he could have done a lot better there versus Mini. Also, had he played his armor better, he probably would have done a lot better, and, you know, either really gone for Tier 4, or, you know, just did not going there. Also, Stooks would have done a lot for Desmond as well. So, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this match. I hope you learned something from it. I hope it just overall was enjoyable, though. If you're watching, subscribe, like, share, and comment on it. This is Imperial Link. Cheers, and see you all tomorrow for another, another exciting episode. Bye!